Here's how to complete the first Modern Warfare 2 raid called Atomgrad. Some prerequisites are you have to play in a team of three, and one of the three players must have completed a raid assignment. It can be unlocked by completing one of the following on screen. The method which worked for me was coming top 20 in a game of BR. And in the current mini BR playlist, there are only 22 teams. As long as you place them top 20, you'll be fine. Once you're in and loaded into the raid, the first objective will be to open the submarine doors. We'll be consistently moving across the right side of the room, taking out normal AI and armored AI, which will lead you up some stairs to a higher elevated platform overlooking the base with claymores along it. If you've gotten to the end, you're going to hop down and proceed further along this underwater base until you get to this dead end point on the right where there will be a lot of AI. Once all the AI has been taken out, make your way through this door here where you'll come across the first raid puzzle. This first step here is opening the submarine doors and in order to do that, you're going to be looking at this menu over here. You'll see this TV monitor that will have three random characters. So in this example, we have K, a weird X and a P. What we need to do is we need to be using a CCTV here and then a CCTV in this room to try and find the three characters that match on here. So KXP, I'm going to keep that in mind. So if we go ahead and use the CCTV, we're going to have a bunch of weird cameras that we're going to be looking through. And none of them will make sense until we get to this one here where we see this on the screen. We see a weird symbol for two, a weird symbol for four, and then a weird symbol for five. So we know from our three digit code we have on the monitor, we have X, so we know that part of that sequence involves this X. So the second symbol in our code is four. So if we back out here, we can see that X is our middle one. So we know that our middle number is going to be four. Now you're going to need a player to press this button and open the door for you and hold it while and the other player crawls in. Once they let go, that shot will shut. Now that we're looking for two other symbols that are going to be matching what we saw on the TV and the other matching symbols. So if we keep looking through, we eventually see that we have here KYP. If you want, you can note down these numbers. KYP is 415. And then we look back and you saw that we have K and P in the sequence from that room and then the X from this one. So we saw in the other room that K was 4 and P was 5. X on that screen is 4. With that in mind, we know that this is going to be 4 or 5. So if we go over here and then in the digit pad type 445. See, the code sequence is correct. But we now need to repeat this puzzle two more times where we have four letters to the code for the second time round and then five letters for the third code. Whoever put in the first code will also see a prompt saying that the fingerprint was added to the database, which means they can't type in the next set of codes. All three players can help to figure out what the next code is from that four letters. A different player will have to put in the code for the second time. And then for the final five letter code, the last player who hasn't typed in the code yet will have to type in the code at the end. Now, when it comes to the second and third instances of this puzzle, there's going to be an additional symbol added to your sequence computer. One of the symbols won't appear on both CCTV images, and this is one that you can ignore. They throw this in to confuse you. Exactly the same for the five letter code, where they're going to throw in two letters which aren't going to be on either CCTV display and essentially duds that you have to ignore. You found the two dud symbols and found the three which actually correlate to a code, and you've got it. That final player can put it in. Once the third player has put in the last code, you'll now see that the doors will open outside and the next prompt will be to pick up an oxygen mask. Once you're in the room, just head up and mantle onto the submarine and then take a left. And on this desk, you'll notice that the air tank will be here. This is going to be crucial as this next section is going to involve you and your fellow teammates having to jump underwater and stay underwater for a very long time. And when the air runs out, you'll have to pick up the air tank from whoever's body is carrying it in order to get your air back. And this is going to be a case of you constantly sharing that oxygen tank around every 15 seconds or so when a player is running low on oxygen. And once you make your way into this section, there's going to be a load of corridors. And when you get to the end of the corridor, you're going to see a cage where you're going to need to press and hold a button in order to let another player swim through. Once that player is through, they're going to need to then hold the button on the other side to let the last player in. Once you get past this point, there'll be a moment where you can go up, catch your breath, and it's a safe area where you can go up and grab a pistol if you haven't already. But once you've all got your breath back, make your way back down through this cage and you'll be swimming along to where you're going to find some barbed wire. Now the way to avoid this is to either just swim straight into it or take a right through the doorway and there'll be a window that you can swim through. If at any point one player dies, they will respawn where the safe area was. So in this case, you spawn very, very close to the team. But if anyone dies, you're going to have to swim back to where they spawn from. Otherwise, they're going to die from the oxygen by the time they get to you. But as you see here, we're going to be following this linear path through this window and it's essentially a little bit of a 
maze to try and find the end here. And what you may not realize is that this actually switches up every time you play. They're very familiar outcomes, but you do need to be a little bit wary here. We're opening through these doors here. When we get to this section, you're going to see this elevator. And there's going to be a door here that in our version we open, but there might be a version where that door is not open. You'll have to go down the other side of the corridor in order to find an opening that brings you into this room here where you've got a little crevice that you can swim down in. Now you'll notice in this hole there is barbed wire just like there was earlier on in this underwater section. One of your teammates are going to have to take one for the team and just fully die it out and then when they respawn swim back grab them with that air tank and share it around and once you're all back you can then swim down through this little hole and after a lot of underground swimming you'll finally get to this crevice where you'll be in a new safe area which is a bit of a cave. Once you've run through this section, you're going to be jumping straight down into this water and we're going to be swimming down again. Now, this also changes its path every time you play only slightly. So you might get caught a little bit off guard, but you'll see these arrows you're going to be wanting to follow them and essentially just trying to get as far underground as possible and continuing to get further and further underground like you're seeing in the gameplay here. It's going to be quite a big, long network of caves where you're going to be want to be sharing that air tank. And as you keep making your way through, eventually you'll get to a new area that looks a bit unfamiliar. There'll be this sort of mortary door that you're going to want to swim through and you'll get into a new safe area. Now, once you've made it to this safe area, you're going to want to dive down underwater again, swim straight forwards, and you'll be in a new room where we have another puzzle. There's going to be a generator, which one player is going to have to activate whilst another player underwater swims into this room and presses this button whilst it's powered on by the generator. What this is going to do is it's going to open this door temporarily so a player can swim into it, then need to wait for the generator to reset where a player will press it, and then the person at the opposite side can then press the button to open the door to let the other players in. If you swam all the way up to the top, you'll find yourself in a new safe area, room with a ton of weapons that you can pick up, as well as equipment. I definitely advise you make the most of it, because this next section is going to have you fighting a fair few amount of AI. They are prompt on this button to regroup at the Fennec Gate, and once all players have interacted, you'll be in this new corridor, where there'll be a section of different armory doors that are going to have AI inside of them. Now, inside the middle right door here, you're going to notice a juggernaut is going to be hiding away. So you're going to want to try and take that thing out as quickly as possible. And be sure to pick up its minigun. Inside of the room where we just killed the juggernaut, there's going to be a button on the wall that's going to be opening this far left door here. There's going to be a ton of AI as well as another juggernaut. So just be wary when you open that door, the jug's going to be there waiting for you. In this room, you're going to find a riot shield, which all players can pick up and have as a secondary weapon on their back. And I highly recommend it as it will make the raid a lot easier at this point. Once you've done that, make your way into this cubicle here. And you're going to be dipping underground and going through the vents. Now there'll be a few different pathways that you can take, but you want to be ending up going the direction that we're going. It will drop you down into a new section called the flooded tunnels. Now, along here, you're going to find a ton of AI such as bomb drones, normal enemies, armored enemies, as well as a jug. Now the flooded tunnels is split up into three main sections that are going to base the finale of the raid here and the last puzzle. Now each player is going to want to dedicate themselves to one of these rooms. The first room we're going to start out here is the second room here. It's labeled O2 above it and once you're inside there's going to be enemies and then a juggernaut spawning but there's going to be a console at the back of the room that you're going to want to activate and once you've activated it and taken down the juggernaut that's one of the three desks that we need to activate you're then going to want to make your way through the tunnels until you end up in a open area which has a massive cylinder shape in the middle which is going to be the middle of the flooded tunnels once you're inside this area there's going to be an area that you can hop up on the left and that's going to be a tunnel leading you to another room that's going to have another terminal in it. Once you've taken out the enemies and activate that terminal, that will be the two terminals activated. And now there's going to be the receiver, which is waiting for activation. This receiver can be found in the middle of the flooded tunnels in this open circular area. When both terminals are activated, the third player will then want to activate the receiver, to start the last puzzle of the raid. Now this puzzle is identical to the puzzle that we had right at the beginning of the raid. The receiver computer is going to show five weird symbols. One player is going to go in the room with one of the terminals and another player goes in the other room with the terminal. You'll notice a countdown timer started in the top left displaying cipher one. The teammate at the receiver computer is going to basically shout out the five Russian symbols that they have and you need to find the three which match from the terminals in each of those rooms. One player is going to have two symbols that match and another player is going to have one symbol that match making a three digit code. The player by the receiver computer is then going to have to input the code matched by those symbols in the order 
that they match from left to right. Just like before, once the first player's inputted the code, we'll now have to swap positions and another player will now be inputting the main code at the sequence computer, whilst there'll be another player that will swap to be in one of the terminal rooms and the other can stay at the other terminal room or vice versa. In this gameplay, I'm going to be doing Cypher 2. So as you can see, I'm looking at that computer and then reading out to my teammates. I have these symbols. Does anyone have any matching? And then I might hear that a teammate might have E and X on their projection and then the other player might have the letter N. So I know that my number order is going to be EXN and whatever numbers correlate to that is going to be my three digit code. Once I've confirmed it, I type it in. As you can see, that code sequence is correct. And when you get onto Cypher 2 and Cypher 3, the AI spawning in each of these terminal rooms is going to get a lot more aggressive. You're going to have a lot more armored enemies You're going to have a lot of bomb drones. So I definitely recommend you take your time. You do have a timer before the ciphers reset on the projection screens in the terminal rooms and the code changes on the sequence computer. But honestly, you have as much time as you need to just set up, be ready in position to read out these letters, translate them into numbers, get them to that person at the sequence computer and get this step done. And you'll get a checkpoint. And now the next point will be to wait for the keypad blast doors to unlock with a four minute timer. This is the final holdout for the raid. And the best way to do this is have two players watching where I am with the other player watching the opposite side. It's going to be a four minute holdout. We're going to have a ton of enemies spawning, a load of bomb drones. So you're really going to want to make sure you're taking those out. And there will be the occasional juggernaut or two that will spawn as well. The idea is to hold out and survive until the timer hits zero. And then once it does, you're going to need to take out all the remaining enemies before you can finish the raid. That counts for bomb drones as well as any AI running around and juggernauts. Once the door says regroup at the blast doors, all players hold their interact and that will be the end of the raid. The final cutscene will play and you will have completed it and earned one of the seven random rewards. If you guys found it useful, if you're looking for groups, just put your Activision IDs in the comments below and subscribe for more.